Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I teach and play through Junk Drawer. And I thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of Junk Drawer by David Smith and published by 25th Century Games. And so I purchased this game at my local game store during game night on Tuesday nights and I bought it for the game group to play, but uh, it, it turns out there's actually a really fun solo mode in this game. And so in Junk Drawer, you're trying to arrange your junk in your drawers and get the most points. The solo mode actually has scoring thresholds that you need to beat uh, depending on the scoring goals that you've chosen for the game. And so let's go into setup here. Now you need your goal board out here and then your junk drawer here. And you'll want to rotate your drawer so that it matches up with the colors here. So the red in the top left corner and the purple in the bottom right corner like so. Then you'll shuffle the item deck and you're going to stick it up here and you're actually going to draw the first four cards like so. I do it this way. Now the game tells you to draw one at a time in a line, but I'll show you exactly what I do. And then you take all your tokens here and we'll spread them out on the bottom here. It doesn't matter what order they're in. And then you can randomly choose your challenges for the game by choosing four of these here. Now there are difficulty levels shown on the bottom left here. So you have easy, medium, and hard. But you can also use the scenarios in the back of the book here. And so they have goal scenarios suggested. And I'm going to use number four here. It's called a sprint, not a marathon. It's all about items that will lose you points and you want to finish organizing as fast as possible. And so we have these four challenges here. Don't cover many spaces. Don't cover perimeter spaces. Don't completely cover rows and columns and create a large gap. And then you'll place these randomly in these boxes here. It really doesn't matter. All right, and so that's it for setup. All right, and so on your turn, the first thing you do is you reveal the first item. So you take these four cards and you're going to flip them over and you'll have your first item revealed. And then you're going to take that item and place it in one of these boxes. Now, for each round, the first item you place can go in any of the boxes, but the next item has to be placed in a box that hasn't had an item placed in it this round, and then the, you know, the following items after that have to do the same thing. So by the end of the round, with the four items, you'll have placed one in each of these boxes. And so when you finish a round, you'll discard these item cards here, and then deal four new item cards and continue with the next round. And of course, the first item of the second round will be able to be placed in any one of the four boxes and you just continue following placement rules. And then if at some point you are unable to place a token following normal placement rules, then the game ends and you go straight into scoring. So let's talk about scoring here. See, the goal of the solo game is to score as many points as shown in the bottom right hand corner, the total of these points. So adding these all together, that's 56 points. But in each of the boxes, you'll see that this sits in the red box on the goal marker here, and this sits in the green box, and so on, that you have to score based off of this particular criteria for that box. So this scoring card corresponds with this box. And so with this scoring card here, all you get is one point for every uncovered space. So you want to have a lot of uncovered spaces at the end of the game. This one here it gets one point for every uncovered perimeter space. This one here gets two points for the, every uncovered space in the largest gap. So you just look for the largest area of uncovered spaces. And then this last one here gets two points for every row or column that is not completed. So if it has at least one un uncovered space in a row or column, you score two points for that row or column. And so that's it. We are ready to begin. We have the charm bracelet as our first item and we get to choose where to place it. And so for this one, I'm going to place it right here, right smack dab in the middle of this box. Again, I want to have uncovered perimeter spaces. So we'll place that one there and then we're ready for our next turn. So we move, remove that card and now we have the sewing materials. And so the sewing materials is this one here. And I think what I'll do is I'll place it in this box. I'm going to go for a bigger gap over in this area. And so we're ready for our next card. And we have the flashlight, which is this one. And I don't like this one. This one takes up a lot of space. So it's either of these and uh, neither of these are good. <laughs> I mean, I could place it in this one. That might be the best option. It, it's only going to cost me two points. So hopefully th that works out. But yeah, if I place it up here, it costs me five points. So definitely not worth it. We'll go move on to the next card and we have the coins. Ah, this one's going to cost me five points anyway. So we'll place this one up here. All right, so now we're done with all four cards. We're ready to go on to the next round. We draw one, two, three, and four into that pile. And then we'll take that pile 
and we'll flip it right over and start with the next one. And we have the keys. And I think it's best if I place it down here like this. All right, and then we move on to our next item and we have a button. Aha, that's really good. So the button I think is probably best either in this one or in this one. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. Although this one gets more points for uncovered spaces. So maybe I should do this one. All right, so moving on to the next item, we have the sunglasses, which is perfect. I can place it right here. Check that out. I was planning on that. Yeah, that worked out really well. So now I have all of these uncovered perimeter spaces. So if we plan things right, we can make it so that this one is the one that takes an item that can't be placed. So any item that is like of two square thickness like this, that is not a long item. Yeah, that'll work out well, but it has to be unable to be placed anywhere. So we have to keep that in mind. All right, so we're moving on to our next item. We have the measuring tape and it can only go on this one here. So it's really unfortunate. It costs us another five points. <laughs> All right, so we're done with those four cards. We're ready on for our next four. Like I said, this is a quick, easy game to learn and quick to play. All right, we have the watch. All right, so where do we want to put the watch? Now I could put it in here, but I don't really want to. I guess the best thing is to put it in here. Well, I guess putting it right here wouldn't be horrible, right? So every, it didn't like finish off any of those rows or columns. So that's actually not too bad. All right, so we're going to the next one. We have the flash drive and it's this little elbow shape here. I almost feel like I should put it up here. It's a smaller item. Let's put it up there and get it out of the way. All right, next up is the bag clips. Now it has to go in this spot here. It's unfortunate, but true. It has to go in here. And the reason why is, is it can't go in here and I can't force the game to end by placing it there instead of here. So it has to go in here. All right, let's hope for a big item here. And we have the earphones. Oh, check that out. It worked out. I can't place this anywhere. Woo. Yeah, that was good placement. All right. So at this point, the game ends. All right. So the nice thing is about this game is it comes with a scoring pad. You know, it's really nice, especially for multiplayer, but I mean, for solo, it's really nice. Just keep track of points. So we'll put my name at the top here, and then we have points for each box. And you'll see on here that it shows the different colors for each box. Of course, it's orientated the right way. All right, so our goal is to get more than 56 points. So we got to beat 56, so 57. All right, so we'll start with the bottom right corner here, and we look for our biggest gap, and it's this area right here, and it looks like 11 spaces, so 22 points. That is incredible. This next one here is uh, uncompleted rows or columns. So one, two, three, four, five columns, and then one, two, three, four. So that's another 18 points. I'm already at 40 points. We're looking really good. Check this one out. I got the maximum score I can get for this. This is a total of 16 squares around that edge, and I get a point for each square, so that's pretty good. And then we're moving on to this one here. Now this is uncovered spaces and it looks like we have 10, 12. So, wow, I really cruised through that score there. We got 30, 52, 68, I think. Wow, that's probably one of my highest scoring games too. All right, so there you have it. That was my tutorial and solo playthrough of Junk Drawer. Now, I do want to note that there are several scenarios that you can play in here. So you have these four here that they suggest to play, but really you can just mix and match. See, the game comes with like 20 of these cards. And again, they, they have different levels of difficulty. So like this one here, create gaps of three spaces. That's got to be difficult to do but you can get a lot of points that way. So yeah, there's a lot of different things to do here. So all you do is you pick four of them and then you have your scoring threshold based off of those four picked to beat. And so yeah, a lot of replayability, a lot of little fun in this box, great components and everything. And so that was the tutorial and solo playthrough of Junk Drawer by David Smith and 25th Century Games. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this game. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.